Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Throne Breaker, and last time we got so surprised by this pile of rubble fighting back, we, uh, may have broken my headphones, but, uh, anyways, that's beside the point. Today, we're gonna, well, I think just, uh, maybe mess around a little bit elsewhere exploring this new area because, well, I wasn't even really intending to go over there, or at least didn't expect for us to run into that puzzle all of a sudden, and so we did get to this new area, and I was looking for us to see if there's any other stuff for us to check out here, because I imagine there's a lot more that we have yet to see, including, but not limited to, I think we've gotten this, but we now know that's certainly a puzzle. <laughs> we know that much, but uh, let's see. There's a notice board down here, point of interest over here, and at least some loot up here, so plenty of stuff in this general area, and, you know, we'll definitely get to that puzzle eventually, but that may not necessarily be the top thing on our priority list at the moment, so... Let's see what's going on here, because this looks like it's somewhat of a significant fortification, and it appears to have our flag on it, but then again, uh, we have seen the Nilfgaardians infiltrate so effectively in the past that what has initially seemed to be our settlement uh, has, in truth, been taken over by the Nilfgaardians, so let's not let our guard down just yet. Like, are these guys, are these guys cool? Are you cool, bro? They're so cool that they don't even want to talk with their queen. So, uh, okay, I guess there's actually nothing over there. But we do know there's certainly something in this general direction. There is a notice board. Is that? No, not wood? Okay, never mind. But uh, we'll check this out, and this is something, too. It's pretty damn. And, uh, well, we're, our main thing is, of course, to go to the capital. Just want to make sure we aren't, like, happening to come across the, the main quest. But, no, I think that's a ways away. Let's see. So, we now know of... Puzzle down here. Something. Point of interest way over there. And yes, yeah, so the main quest will take us down to the bottom right corner. And I think that's far enough away. Probably still a little while off before we're heading over in that direction. So, let's see. I think we chat with this person before we interact with these people over here. Not necessarily sure we can. So, alright, let's see what this is all about. Looks like... A soldier speaking to some civilians and maybe trying to recruit them into the army? Not sure. The Nilfgaardian invasion necessitated certain steps. Neve had dispatched scrolls to her garrison commanders, based upon which they were to announce general musters. She'd hoped that by the time she reached Crydam, fresh recruits would be waiting to join her growing force. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I imagine Perhaps it didn't go that smoothly, though. The commander of this fort, one Sergeant Griggs, had only bad news. Your Majesty. I've not the numbers to man the walls, even. The call to arms brings few new recruits, and more men desert each day. Folk are terrified something awful. They don't believe in victory. Okay. They need a little bit of extra belief, you say? Let's see. We can make a speech, we can press the townsmen into service, or we can buy them off. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. How good is, uh, how good are Meme's speech skills? I feel like she's shown she's a very apt public speaker in the past. So this might be a good option. I feel like that's the way to go. This feels like this could just backfire. Given how it seems as though they've made efforts already and the townspeople have not been so inclined to join the army thus far. I'm not sure much is going to change if we accost them about it. So maybe we just try to inspire them. Make them believe in the victory. I believe in your victory. They don't believe in victory? The queen rose from behind the table, toppling her chair. Then let them hear how I smashed the blackclads at Dravagrad. Quick as can be, the commander gathered all Crydam's inhabitants in the central square. Neve stepped out in front of the crowd and recounted her most recent victory. The folk of Crydam listened with bated breath. And so, we must stand together. Fight, arm in arm. Be a wall. A wall against which black-clad hordes will be dashed! All right, Meave, now we're talking. Now we're talking. The townsfolk responded with thunderous applause, yet enthusiasm is rarely long-lived. Okay. The horn of Meave's fiery words had dispersed after but a few days. No new volunteers joined what? the garrison. What? Excuse me? hid from Sergeant Griggs. To avoid being pressed into service. Neither the towns nor the Queen's own company were reinforced, and Meave left Crydam angry as a wasp. 
Excuse me. They were inspired for a, a few days, but apparently no one decided to join the army in those few days, despite us continuously asking them to do so. I suppose there's just this gap in time where it wasn't like, you know, immediately after the inspiring speech, for whatever reason, Griggs here decided, no, we're not going to try to follow up and confirm that we can add additional people to the army. No, we're, we're going to give them a couple days off after that, wait for them to calm down, and then ask them, you know, when they're back to their normal state and, and aren't all hyped up about uh, Meave's speech. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea because, uh, well, I did wonder... Given how it seemed like there was basically a, okay, make an inspiring speech or throw down the money <laughs> to bribe people. You know, why would you ever bribe people if you could get the job done without having to pay? Seemed like, a, you know, the speech part was maybe a little too good to be true. And after the performance that me put on, it seemed like maybe, maybe it was still going to work. But no, no, perhaps money is at the end of the day the thing that would have done all the talking so that's unfortunate it did raise our spirits at the very least i was gonna say it's got to do at least something right but uh that is unfortunate because of course very much would like to have gotten additional uh recruits there but okay i mean anyone else we can chat with here it looks like we might still be able to chat with griggs assuming that is him there but uh griggs i'm very disappointed you in you Yellow-bellied cowards and shirkers, that's who. Yeah, but see, like, we did our part. And, uh, you know, can't help but feel like after such a speech, you should have been able to recruit some people. No will to fight amongst the common folk. No will, no spirit at all. Except there was, after we gave the speech. No will to fight amongst the common folk. No will, no spirit at all. Alright, well. We'll grab some resources. Let's take another look at our map here just to see which direction is technically preferable. And uh, we know there's loot over there further in that direction and puzzled down here. I'm thinking, why don't we try a little more exploration in the general villagey area, which looks like that's generally the case if we head further west, whereas once we start going northwest or further south, then it gets more outside the bounds of this little establishment and of course we go further south and east we're eventually gonna head over toward the main quest so i imagine we're probably gonna be headed over there uh once we're done with everything else in this area so maybe we go here and then check out up to the northwest or possibly even further west over here so let's see uh can we still go through here we can we can i also noticed uh what is it here it has given us this exclamation point. Oh, it's just our commander said. Okay. We may have gotten... What was it that we picked up recently? I don't recall. Oh, this. Roger on bear. Restraint, so can't target any bosses. Transform a damage unit into a bear. 22 power. Oh. That would be really convenient if we could transform bosses into a random bear. Uh, and just immediately win in almost every special encounter. But alas, it is not that straightforward. Um, I mean, 22 is... It sounds really high. But, uh... I mean, bear in mind, no abilities, so... I mean, as, like, a, a last turn that you take, maybe? I mean, assuming your opponent is dealing damage to you, which most of the time is the case, but might be some situations in which that's actually not happening. In which case, good luck, because this is doing basically nothing. But uh, I guess you could do it to an opponent as well. It doesn't say one of your units, it just says a unit. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are great use cases for it. It's just there are times when it's going to be great and going to be times when it does quite literally nothing. And so that's definitely a risk. And maybe a risk that we don't need to be taken. Also, have an update here at the Royal Tent. Let's see. Uh, Nilfgaardian Offensive Report. Okay. Nilfgaard cross border in three spots. Near Spala, Scala, and Rivia. Enemy march to capital temporarily halted by victory at Dravigrad. Good. But further attacks expected in near future. Imperial forces simultaneously attacking Temerian allies. Oh, okay. Th that may be the first we're hearing of that. Enemy scouts seen surveying Road to Edern, another of the northern realms that is not Nilfgaard. I don't know if it's technically an ally or not. 
since, uh, well, the Northern Realms, I think, generally, before Nilfgaard attacked, were not the friendliest toward one another, and there was generally a lot of bickering and fighting and uh, war, probably, uh, or at least battles every now and again. So, uh, usually may not be allies, so to speak, at least until Nilfgaard showed up and suddenly there was a much bigger threat and they decided, you know, maybe we should team up here. But anyways, the Imperial fleet movements near the ports of Novograd, uh, Rogovin, and Lavakin suggest attack on Redania also planned, another one of the Northern Realms, all north in danger. Yeah, that does seem to be the overarching theme here. Okay. So now let's carry on. And is this another notice board? A contract. No. On a monster. Interesting. Oh. Well, that is very interesting because we have, uh, let's just say in the Witcher world, we've heard about a lot of contracts on monsters. It, uh, Tends not to be the, the king or queen who's seeking those out, though. It tends to be more, oh, I don't know, witchers. So, does that mean? Does that mean we're going to run into a witcher soon? Might it be a certain special witcher that we might know particularly well? Oh, we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. So, let's see. We can go further up in this direction, or we can go more directly west. Do we have a preference there? We know there's a point of interest over here. We don't know really anything about further west more directly. So maybe we check this out and see what that's all about. Because uh, we know that there's definitely something there. And I feel like this is certainly a large enough area that I would not be surprised if we saw there was a golden chest somewhere around here. So let's keep our eyes peeled because this is, of course, our first time in this general area. So let's see. Because that's the puzzle over there. Okay. We aren't necessarily looking to go there just yet. Was there... Other than down here, no, not, not interested. Yeah, I was actually wondering if he was going to run at us and attack us, but no, I think we need to get closer for him to actually do that, but no, not interested in that at the moment. Just seeing if there's any other loots over there, but it doesn't look like it, so let's carry on. And, uh, okay. Woman over here who may have a quest for us, it seems, or something of particular note. Let's see what this is all about. Your Grace. The cottage lives, in the cottage lives an herbalist whom the local peasants hold in high regard. Her potions and ointments have healed many wounds, saved many lives. Do you wish to procure remedies from her stock? Uh, a, a few coins for a fragment of a card? I'd say so, yeah. I think whenever we see these, we're generally going to want to try to make it happen. So, sure. I mean, that's not even that expensive, right? Let's see, and we completed Dimeridian Balm, okay? This card is now complete. You can find it in the commander tent, or command tent. Let's take a look then. So a new card, and it is right here. Restore all enemies to their base power. That's an interesting one. Seems kind of similar to the Marjoram Bear in that at times could be fantastic. At times could be horrendous or just do nothing. So the idea here being that if our opponents have boosted their units a ton, then we use this card and reset them all to their starting power, and, I mean, who knows how many points that could be worth. If our opponent is doing some absolutely insane boosting, then this could be, I mean, it's unlimited how many points it could be worth. It could be a hundred or more, uh, but, again, it's very situational, the use for it, so maybe the type of thing that we leave out of our deck for now but then, if we find ourselves getting into some kind of uh, encounter in which we feel like we just don't have the right setup to get the job done, and we notice that they have a lot of boosting, then this could be the type of thing that would be really good to throw in. So, that's an interesting one. Definitely glad we could pick it up. Okay. So, let's carry on, though. What is this? Hold on. Did we have this music playing previously? Because this is what? It's sort of the Gwent multiplayer theme. The whistling tune in the background. Let's see. Another fast travel spot here? Looks like it. I mean, it's quite close to the previous one. I mean, I suppose. We've been getting them with some frequency, so perhaps not. Perhaps not that much closer than what we usually see. Let's see. Is this... 
That's wood over there. Let's pick this up. And yeah, it does look like there's another village down there. I'm thinking maybe we wait before we go over there. Down that area. Uh, we draw the line here. As well, maybe let's, let's go to the northwest first. And then we'll head over down there and see what that stuff's all about. Because we have another person here we can chat with. A lady. Hovel's resident, a peasant by the name of Bogan, has word for you. He claims he saw someone under cover of night bury some sort of treasure near the orchard. Sounds like, yeah, a potentially a map for golden chests, which means we're definitely going to want this. Let's see. So, for a small sum, he's offered to sketch a map of where to look. See, very well, we can pay 50 coins for it. That's not that bad. Or he'll make the map, but at no cost. Have him last, should he refuse. We are on high morale right now. I usually I'm not too concerned about that, but uh, it'd be kind of nice to keep that if we can. So I'm thinking that's not that hefty of a price. We have a sizable sum of coins at the moment, so and I don't really think we're saving up for anything particularly big right now. So yeah, sure. Let's see what we can get. All right, so I think. This looks like a, a relatively good hint relative to some of the other ones we've seen in the past. Our previous one took us forever to find, but that's clearly a stump with an axe in it and then some benches and a tree over here, some kind of hut. So that, I'm hoping, will be on the easier side for us to track down. And uh, let's just double back a little bit. Like, I mean, basically whenever we see an axe like this in a stump, that is perhaps a, a good thing to double check, although that doesn't really line up with the the way those the image was set up in the picture there. So I want to make sure we haven't already run past, although of course it could be further off in an area that we've not yet been to. There's not one here. No? No, not here. For a second I was wondering, like, maybe right there, but there is no stump with an axe in it. Definitely still some stuff over there as well. So we'll want to head over in that direction. I think that's probably where we're headed next. And of course, if we do come across what looks to be the place where that hidden gold chest might be, then great, we'll absolutely take it. Let's move on here. Because I think there's still more. Yeah, there's definitely still more in this direction. So let's check that out. Let's see, yep. I was going to say that's definitely a large pile of wood. Is it a large pile of wood that we can actually loot? And yes, we can. Oh, okay. We, of course, missed out on some recruits previously, but happy to get some more here. Those have generally been somewhat difficult to come across. So we've got Almdike. Looks like some kind of farm, and we can't, or orchard, and we can't go in there to loot that. We should be able to go down here to pick this up, though, I think, and... No, that's not an axe over there. That's like a shovel and a pile of dirt. Let's grab that, and then we'll chat with these people here. Well, I think we can sneak in this way? Yes, okay. Then we should be able to nab this stuff here, and maybe even more. Down. No, we can't go past this stone wall. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit more over there. It looks like maybe we head up through there to get to this spot, though. Okay. So let's chat with those people over there. See what is going on. We're just chatting. Something more. Looks like they're getting in some kind of heated discussion. Let's see. As Meave and company traversed the ruddy meadows, strident voices reached their ears. I beg your pardon. I've heard enough. A duel. I challenge you to a duel. <laughs> a duel? Nonsense. I'd sooner lay you across my lap and give your ass a thorough flailing, you scoundrel. The Queen approached the arguing parties. Two nobles, Lords Cartwright and Mansfield. Quickly, she ascertained they were up in arms over ownership of an orchard lying between their estates. <clears throat> Assisting both nobles, their kinsmen, armed to the teeth, prepared to leap at each other and crush heads. Oh. Okay. 
Also, uh, in Gwent multiplayer, isn't this a line from uh, Prince Anses? A duel, I challenge you to a duel. Or thee to a duel. Upon spotting me, the lords lowered their voices, bowed and presented themselves. Yet they could not keep their ire fettered long and were soon casting aspersions again. Y your grace, Mansfield has seized it. No, no, stolen my land. <laughs> land that has been in my family for generations. It All is right. my recompense for your reckless deeds. To burn down me mill in Furchin for a bit of sawdust in your flour. Well, I never. A bit, a bit. Oh, let me at him. Farman's taken ill, cook's feverish, all from that manure. You are a fraud, sir. A fraud and a thief. So it sounds like a bit of a history of misdeeds that they have, uh, they have done toward one another. And so it's a, a constant back and forth of someone doing something and then trying to get revenge for that something and then getting revenge of from the revenge and uh, the whole cycle of vengeance. Though she faced the not at all trifling matter of the Nilf Guardian invasion, Meave agreed to settle the dispute. Okay. Raymond, who knew the history of every Lyrian and Rivian family seven generations back, served as her advisor. No well doubt done, Raider. would find for the Cartwrights. They are in the right here as regards the title to the land. Yet your grace must consider the Mansfields have ever served the crown and never delayed payment of tribute. Whereas the Cartwrights, the Cartwrights are litigious charlatans who owe the royal <laughs> treasury thousands. Oh. Many thousands. Interesting. So one group seems to be in the right. However, they've generally not been nearly as supportive of the country. Whereas uh, the other one is in the wrong, however, has historically been a great supporter of the crown. And so the question of, okay, do we do what is morally correct or do we do the thing that serves us more directly? Tough question. So let's see, it is the Cartwrights are the ones that are in the right. Helpful with their name, I suppose. But uh, it is the Mansfields who are the ones that have been more supportive of us or the state of uh, Lyria and Rivia. So, order the orchard to be divided, or we can take the middle ground. That's kind of interesting. I mean, very rarely do you have the option to go with a middle ground in The Witcher, or now, of course, in Thronebreaker. So that's a little bit surprising to me. Uh, and <laughs> for that reason, gives me a little bit of caution going with that approach. I feel like, surely, surely this, this has got to backfire in some totally horrendous way and rather than uh being a happy middle ground instead it just makes both of them totally furious at you and you know it's the worst outcome so uh well so what do we what do we expect i'm thinking that maybe if we support the cart rights uh it might improve our morale maybe might improve our recruits it's definitely not going to improve our our monies Whereas if we support the Mansfields, they're probably most likely to give us monies, maybe recruits, because they're the ones that have been most supportive of us in the past. So, I mean, we are already at high morale. So if we're looking at this purely from a pragmatic standpoint, if that is the thing that we're going to get from supporting the Cartwrights, which, of course, we don't know for certain, just trying to read between the lines based on what we're seeing here, then uh, if that is the reward for it, then that doesn't really help us at all. Whereas, I think this is more of a sure thing that's going to at least support us in some way, shape, or form. It might lower our morale, but even if that is the case, at least we're still just at neutral. So, for that reason, at least from a, a purely pragmatic standpoint, probably does still make more sense to go with the Mansfields here, unless we want to just try the middle ground option. But like I said, I feel like that is so rare for us to see that ever in The Witcher, in Thronebreaker, that I feel like this has got to come with a pretty serious catch, so I'm very reluctant to go that route. I feel like we support the Mansfields. Obviously, it is the morally incorrect, the, the more corrupt thing to do, but uh, at least based on the lasting effects of it, I think, I think it's going to be the thing that is most helpful to us. The orchard must go to the vassal unburdened by debt. 
This is what I prefer, said Meave. Thus I declare it Mansfield's. But the law clearly says... I am the law, Cartwright. Hey. Cartwright moved <laughs> to debate the matter further, but a snort from Raynard reminded him he stood before his liege. Mansfield, content, made an ample contribution to bolster Meave's force and the realm's defense. Nice. Okay, so I like that. That is what we were hoping to get from this. We also just got uh, an achievement for plutocracy, so... Uh, I'm curious to see what that is, uh, what that achievement is for. Is it specifically for this encounter? Or is it, uh, more generally if you do a certain number of things that make you basically, um, you know, a terrible, uh, dictator? Because, uh, there have certainly been times when we have gone that route, and this is arguably one of them. So, uh, well, <laughs> we have done so. Let's see. We chat with them again. Do they have anything else to say in the matter? <laughs> so you see, my dear Cartwright, justice has been served. Well, moral of the story for this guy at least is a uh, sorry, dude. But uh, maybe if you had uh, maybe if you had paid your taxes, we would have supported you. But uh, I'm afraid that may or may not have been the difference between you getting what probably should have been rightfully yours and uh, giving it over to your not so friend over here. But uh, anyways, let's carry on a little bit because we know there's at least some other stuff from a loop standpoint in this direction. I think that was probably the encounter that we were seeing on our map in this area, right? Yeah, that was the point of interest over here. But uh, as we can see, there's at least a little bit more loot. And we're still trying to keep an eye out for that golden chest, which... Oh, this might be it. This might be it because it had the benches... Like, right here-ish? Because it had the axe, it had the benches, I thought it had a little, uh, tent of some variety. Yeah, it's just a matter of where relative to that axe is the actual chest. I'm almost certain. There it is. There it is. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Let's see, what do we have here? What do we have? Congratulations, you can use this avatar in the Gwent multiplayer card game. I don't recognize that person. Kind of just looks like a random soldier dude with an absolutely exquisite, exquisite mustache. But, uh, okay, perhaps reason enough to use it. <laughs> I'll have to ponder that one. Now a little bit more loot over here, and uh, now we are back over in this area where we have that puzzle. But, yeah, this is not an area we can walk across, so we'd have to go looping back around. But, uh, that may be... Something that we'll be looking to do fairly soon here, because I think we have now more or less done everything in this area that we are looking to do, and I'm certainly very glad that we were able to fairly quickly, efficiently, and easily pick up that hidden golden chest that is the one with the map, because like I was saying last time, last time we got one of those maps, sure we might have gotten a hit where it was, but uh, we did not have the easiest of times actually being able to locate it and get the loot from it. So, uh, glad that we got the chance to pick this one up this time without too much trouble. Let's see. So then, if we're, if we're eyeing our map here, yeah, I think next on our agenda is... Well, hold on. Why are there two... Puzzle and... Oh, there's loot right next to it. Really, I did not even notice that. Uh, but I think, yeah, either this is next on our agenda or it's to explore further down either in the west southwestern area here or more straight east over here we also know there's a puzzle over here so yeah we definitely have a few different options as to where we'd like to go next obviously we know we have a general sense as to what the idea is for this puzzle here so maybe it'd be best to stick with uh concluding the things that we've already in some way shape or form initiated in this case and uh wrap that up and then we start heading over to the newer stuff over here and here also, we still have this question mark over here, which was the place where there were the guys that were trying to tell us we needed to pay to get past them. And then we just decided to go around the other way. And uh, but that's where we found Shu. And I'm very glad that we did that, of course. But uh, just a little alarming that there is still a question mark here. I mean, now that we have successfully gone around and done all the stuff up there, would they still have the same conversation with us if we were to go back to them? Are they still going to say, hey, pay up? What was it, like 200 uh, coins or something like that? Uh, or now that we have concluded all that stuff, would they say, 
Uh, hold on. Um, no, we have other business to attend to with you, in which case it might still be worth heading over there, because obviously they still want us to pay, and that's it, then. We've no use chatting with them. We've already done all there is to do in that area that is, uh, of particular help to us. But anyways, I think that's a good place for us to wrap up here. So, uh, next time, of course, we'll be looking to explore further in this general area. But thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time.